Hello everybody, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Peter Llewellyn and I run the services at medcomsnetworking.com where you'll find information services, resources, activities going on for the global medcoms community, by which I mean people who work in and around medical communications, medical education and medical publishing. Um, and importantly, um, we're, we're keen to engage with people who want to join medcoms, uh, who want to start a career in medcoms. And I've got a whole uh, load of resource at firstmedcomsjob.com articles, videos, activities, uh, which try to give you an insight into working in medcoms and into the different agencies and so on. Um, so today we're combining those, uh, all of those activities in one with a webinar um, with uh, the guys from Helios. Absolutely delighted to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. And we're gonna talk about the hybrid role. And I, I guess, and what I like about this is a little bit different from some of the other talks we've had recently, uh, where we tend to focus on writing or account management or whatever. The whole point about this is that Helios is a hybrid role um, and it's gonna be a really good opportunity to talk that through um, and explain what happens. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, David. I should just say quickly uh, to the audience today, we're going to have a presentation and open this up to a Q&A. So please um, come in with your questions and answers. Uh, questions, sorry, we'll answer you question <laughs> um, via the text boxes. So on that note, over to David. Thanks very much. And thanks a lot, Peter. Welcome, everyone. And you know, we're really excited today to talk to you about our hybrid roles within Medcoms. Um, these are fairly unique within the industry, um, so it'll be great to give you some more information on them. So this is the, the panel we've got uh, today, and a bit later on in the presentation, each of us will talk a bit about our career path through Medcoms, how we've sort of come across this hybrid role within Helios and what it's added to our career. So for now, we're just going to do very brief introductions. So I'm David, I'm on the senior management team at Helios and I'm a scientific project services director. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I joined Helios about five years ago now and I'm currently a scientific lead. Hi, I'm Nat, I've been at Helios just over four years and I'm a scientific project leader. And hi everyone, I'm Victoria. I joined Helios about two and a half years ago and I'm an associate scientific project leader. Brilliant. And this is what we're going to run through over the next sort of 20 to 25 minutes. So we'll give you um, a brief introduction to Helios and what it's like to work here. And then we'll move on to introduce these hybrid roles so you can see what they're like at entry level and then how you can use that experience to move up through the sort of career ladder within our company. And then probably the most interesting bit is, like I said, each of us is going to give our own personal reflections on what the hybrid role has, has meant for us and, and why we think it's a really great opportunity. And then um, probably the best part of it, it will be the Q&A at the end. So do you know keep submitting your questions throughout. We'll have a, a good discussion at the end. So to kick off, who are we at Helios? So the company was set up in 2015 by our four founding directors. And in the sort of six years since then, we've grown really quickly to an agency that's now over 100 people in size. And that growth was recognized last year by the Sunday Times, who do an annual fast track award uh, for the fastest growing private companies in Britain. Um, and Helios actually ranks um, in the top 20 of that, which was you know, a really proud moment for the company. And that success has also been reflected in that we've launched a sister agency called Celine Medical Communications last year. And we'll also be launching a US agency called Apollo later this year. So that's why we're now known as the Helios Global Group. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can see our UK office locations. So we've got a really strong presence in the northwest of England. Um, our largest office is at the beautiful Alderley Park site in Cheshire. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be opening a brand new office in Manchester City Centre. And we've also got um, an office in Oxford, which has just moved to the Botley area. And again, there's another office we're really looking to grow. So it's really exciting times for the Helios Global Group at the moment. And I just want to very quickly give you a flavor of you know, what we're about and what it's like to work here. So we've got a really simple ethos at Helios. It's be a great place to work and aim for excellence in everything we do. And basically, whenever we're making decisions at the company, it always really does come back to this. Are we going to compromise either of these values um, when we're making decisions? And so just to give you a bit of a flavor of what we mean by each of these. So in terms of being a great place to work, what we don't have on here 
is the fact that it's generally just a really supportive environment at the company. Um, everyone's really excited to have new people coming into the company, you know, train these people up, giving them opportunities um, and see them develop. But on the other side, we do have a really fantastic social committee. And if you've got any questions about that, you know, Nat's really heavily involved in this. Um, and at the top there, we've just got an example of some of the, um, the creative things we've done during the pandemic to, uh, to keep everyone interested. So this is an example. We did um, a pizza night where we had pizza kits all sent to our house and, and cooked them over Zoom. We've also done virtual escape rooms, um, cocktail nights. And then at the bottom, we've just got examples of some of the things we do in more normal times uh, where we get together for company away days. And if you're, if you're interested in sports, then there's loads of stuff going on, like Tough Mudders and running clubs and hit sessions and stuff like that. And in terms of aiming for excellence, this is just basically about making sure for every project we deliver, we're delivering the highest quality for our clients. And the way we approach that at Helios is basically by trying to establish a true partnership with each of our clients, where it's not sort of an agency client relationship. Basically, they will feel like we're an extension of their team. And that gives us the sort of environment where we can come with our ideas um, and we feel empowered to challenge their ideas as well. So it's a real collaboration and together, you know, we can move forwards with sort of the best solutions for them and that's been one of the key things to our success and in terms of um, new opportunities that come into the business this comes back to balancing sort of both of our, our values in that ethos is first of all do we have the experience and the resource to deliver whatever the new opportunity is and is it going to compromise being a great place to work? You know, is it going to mean that people are going to have to work some crazy hours to deliver this, this new opportunity? And if it does compromise that, you know, we do turn a lot of work down for that reason. And for people new to Medcoms, that probably sounds like a really sensible thing, but it's actually quite unique in Medcoms that it doesn't happen very often. And people are, you know, often stretched um, in some agencies. So. I think that's something we're really proud of and has been really successful and also valued by our clients, that honesty that we have, that they know they can trust us to deliver when we take something on. And on this side, I just want to say, um, you know, for people coming into the company, like I say, everyone is really excited about seeing Helios grow. Um, you'll come into a really supportive environment. You'll get the, the sort of mentorship and support you need on a day-to-day -day basis from your colleagues. There'll be a, a variety of um, client and account and therapy area inductions that will be available to you. And there's a really tailored training program as well. The sessions are run really frequently, so you'll, you'll get the opportunity um, to take um, to do a number of different training um, programs. And then finally, um, when you come in, we like to limit it to a maximum of two different accounts you'd work on. So you'd either come into one big account where there'll be a lot of variety within that count of the types of things you can work on. Or we might bring you into two slightly smaller accounts um, so you get a bit more variety in therapy area and you know, client processes and things like that. So I'd now like to move on to introduce these hybrid roles to you, um, what the entry level ones are and the qualifications needed for them, and then how you can sort of progress through the company after you've sort of settled into those roles. So I'm going to take it quite slowly on this slide, so it's quite complicated and just to make sure it's, it's clear to everyone. So in the middle of this slide, we're going to have our project leading roles, which are our hybrid roles. Um, and in many agencies, they will have what they will call client services roles instead, which is sort of your roles like account executive, account manager, um, and most frequently, these people would be non-scientific and would be sort of specialists in project management. Whereas at Helios, um, we like to bring people in who've got the scientific know-how as well, get the variety to do a bit of project management. And that sort of scientific knowledge is really useful within the role too. On the right of the screen is going to be our editorial focus role. So that's going to be, you know, your medical writer roles. And then on the left of the screen is going to be um, sort of qualifications you need to come into these roles. 
So if we focus at the center and at the bottom first, so these are our entry level hybrid roles. So we've got scientific database coordinator and associate scientific project coordinator. I'll tell you a bit more about these two roles on the next slide, but these are the roles you can come in after you've graduated from your first degree. So a biosciences or, or life sciences degree. Um, you know, you'd spend some time in these roles doing a mix of project management and content, and then you can progress to scientific project coordinator. Now, if you've already got a postgraduate degree, such as a master's or a PhD, then you can come in directly at that level. And on the right, if you already know that um, it's this, you know, the content development and the writing that you want to focus on, then you could come straight into an associate medical writer role. So we're not going to be focusing on that writer role today, but if, you've, if that's where you, you know you want to head and you've got questions on that, feel free to still ask them during the Q&A at the end. So our writers would progress up the writing track there on the right. And our um, hybrid roles can progress up to a senior scientific project coordinator, and then you start our project leader roles there. So associate scientific project leader, and then there's a, a number of roles above that too. But the beauty of the hybrid role is you can come in and you can get that experience under your belt and then you can decide where it is you want to take your career. So if you've decided that the content development you've done within that hybrid role is where, you know, your passion really is, that's what you, you really want to follow, then we can transition you across to the writing route and then you can head up the right hand side of, uh, of this as your career path. And likewise, even in more senior positions, um, there's the opportunity for people within the company to move across from writing roles to hybrid roles and vice versa. And Victoria will give us a bit of an example of that later on. So yeah, the focus of today is on our hybrid roles where you can do both project management and writing. And I won't spend too much time on this. This is just to introduce those two um, graduate entry level roles in a bit more detail. But essentially, a lot of your time would be taken up in sort of getting the grounding of what Medcoms is and supporting with the project management on the accounts. And there's some lists there of the type of things you do within the role. You'd also get the opportunity to do some content development and also attend on-site client meetings where they're actually happening. Um, the key differences between these two entry-level roles are as the sort of title suggests, the database one, you'd probably come into one of our big accounts where we put a large amount of materials through databases like Viva and DataVision, um, and you'd be asked to sort of manage that process as a large part of your role. And then the project coordinator, you'd be working more on a project basis. So maybe you'd be working across a number of big meetings we're running, um, and a large part of your role would be things like um, keeping status sheets up to date, tracking timelines, taking minutes at status calls for those, um, those big meetings we're working on. So now I want to open it up to the rest of the, the panel and just give you a bit of a flavor of how we've sort of progressed through our career, um, you know, where we've done the hybrid role and, and what it's added. Um, so we're going to start with Nat and Sarah, who both came into Helios at entry level hybrid roles. So you can see how how they found that. And then Victoria and I will give our reflections, which are a bit different, where we've moved across from writing roles to um, hybrid roles a bit later in our career. Thank you. Um, so I think, as David mentioned, I came at it from quite a uh, conventional route, I think, into medcoms uh, directly from academic research. So I started with a, um, an undergraduate degree in chemistry, not with any particular career aspiration in mind, mainly just something that was scientific and gave me maybe a broad uh, knowledge base to leap from into my career. Um, following that, I moved into um, a PhD because I really loved research. So we were looking at um, the formation of antimicrobial coatings for dental implants. As that was quite, um, it was joint between chemistry and the um, dental school. So I had quite a lot of exposure to clinicians and I found that I really enjoyed that aspect of it in particular, which led me into an industry funded postdoc as part of the, the clinical trials group with the dental school. Following that, I took a much needed uh, break from research and everything and went traveling. And I think upon my return to the UK was really looking for that 
just for the next career move really so I knew I'd loved research but definitely wanted something something different but still scientific based so being in the northwest I came across a lot of um, associate medical writer um, adverts which I thought sounded great because it really combined my love of research and science but also um, writing as well so I thought this is going to be a great career so upon looking for uh, that and trying to find the right agency fit I also came across Helios um, enter the scientific project coordinator role um, which was um, upon reading the the advert for that really just spoke to me as well because it was it combined a lot of the um, the research and the content generation side but also the project delivery side as well so that kind of fast-paced um, aspect of the role um, and also just the delivery as well so really seeing something through to the end so starting something and uh, moving it to fruition which really appealed to me and had done throughout my academic research as well um, so I started uh, I joined Helios just over four years ago as an SPCO so we were very small then I think I was number 17 employees so it has been a real pleasure to be part of Helios as we've grown um, to the Helios global group that we are now and um, so I joined as SPCO um, and then as David said, there is the option then to move sideways possibly into the more editorial route. But I found that for me, while initially I thought I might prefer the content generation, I actually love the, the combination and the, the hybrid nature of the role itself. So I think I feel quite spoiled really because it was kind of serendipitous that I found the role, but I don't think I would enjoy either strand as much in isolation as I do in combination. So being able to do both on a day-to-day -day basis um, yeah, is, is just great really. Um, so I moved from an SPCO to an Associate Scientific Project Leader through to the Scientific Project Leader, which I am now. And um, a typical day for me can, can look like anything really, but this is just a, a snapshot of um, some recent activities I think that I've been working on. So we'll probably usually start with emails and they are certainly peppered throughout the day um, through to internal team meetings. So team huddles, just checking in with other project leaders, um, checking that they have all the resource that they need in order to deliver the projects, um, reviewing HCP contracts, financial tracking and invoicing for our clients, lunch um, through to maybe something a bit more content heavy, such as collation of um, Congress coverage reports, um, and then something maybe delivery of a, a promotional client meeting, which is something I've been working on a lot recently. And what's interesting here is that even if you are attending a promotional meeting or more of a technical aspect, you really are just exposed to so much content through the role as well, which is brilliant. And to have that scientific background as well, to be able to, to understand it and run with it and utilize it in the project management side, I think is incredibly fulfilling. Filling. Um, so for me, I chose hybrid and it really speaks to me and that's why I continued down it because I get to utilize my science background for outside of research. Um, it's fast paced and varied, but also it's a, a career with purpose and you can really see that it has a positive impact on people. Um, and I think for me that that's really important, particularly when it's, it's very busy. It's really great to see that, that impact on um, society. Great, so I'll go next. So my background is in neuroscience and I did a bachelor's in uh, neuroscience at the University of Manchester. Um, and during that time, I also spent one year as a research intern at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, studying Parkinson's disease. So um, yeah, during that experience, I found that I really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed kind of being in the science and I wanted to do something that was still kind of scientifically challenging. Um, but I didn't necessarily want to continue in a research lab and academia wasn't really um, drawing me in at that point. Uh, so I was trying to look for an alternative that would still have that scientific content and still be challenging, but um, in a different setting. And I came across uh, medical communications, which seemed to fit exactly what I was looking for. Um, and when I was looking into the details of the different roles available, I found that a lot of the different tasks and things that come up uh, really appealed to me. So I heard that there were two different streams in medcoms, more content focused and more project focused. Um, and I found it really hard to decide what I would want to do, because although I thought I wanted to be in the content because I liked science, um, I also thought I would quite like the project um, side because I quite organized and like planning uh, things. So um, I ended up joining Helios as a scientific project coordinator to do a bit of everything. Um, and that role was really useful for me in that it gave me a really good grounding. Um, I got to try lots of different types of tasks across lots of different accounts. Um, and it, it really gave me a really good basis of what Medcoms is um, right at the start when I was still kind of brand new. 
after a while, actually, in that role, I decided that I did prefer the content development side. Um, and I transitioned to become an associate medical writer. And then I continued through the writing stream to um, scientific lead, which is my current role. Um, and in my current position, I work um, across two different therapy areas, so uh, respiratory and epilepsy, and across two different types of accounts. So the respiratory one is more an above brand program, which means it's focused more on kind of disease awareness. Um, and then the epilepsy program is more on publication. So yeah, quite varied um, different types of work uh, throughout the day. Um, and then within a typical uh, day, uh, we will have um, kind of regular internal whether it's uh, a full account team to discuss the specific projects we have going on uh, with the account leads to discuss like resource and planning for the future um, and I'm also a line manager so I'll have um, regular catch-ups with my line reports. So while I in terms of the benefits of a hybrid for me um, I personally didn't continue in a hybrid uh, role long term but I do feel that my time in a hybrid position, that SPCO role at the beginning was extremely valuable. It gave me a taste of, kind of everything that goes on in a project. And it was really helpful for my um, long-term development as well, because I can appreciate kind of what all the different logistical steps are um, in a project and delivery of a project. Um, and it also means that I can feed into planning discussions now because I, I have that kind of awareness, um, which is really helpful. So I'll pass to Victoria. Great, thanks very much. Um, so I took a slightly unconventional route into medical communications. I started out actually graduating from UCL Medical School in 2013 and then went to work at Winchester Hospital for two years doing my foundation years. Um, and it's quite common at the end of those two years for doctors to take a year out, some to go to Australia, doing different things before they specialise. I didn't do that. I knew I didn't want to continue in the NHS long term, but I knew I wanted a career where I still got to use all the scientific content knowledge that I'd spent quite a few years developing. But I didn't know what that was. So I went back to UCL to do my master's in uh, prenatal genetics. And it was during that master's that I went to a careers fair. And it was the first time I'd ever, ever heard of medical communications. Um, and it sounded like a perfect fit. So I got my first um, non-NHS job as an associate medical writer and progressed up through to medical writer, which was really fantastic. I got to as I said, use all the knowledge that I gained previously, but in a totally different way, while still having a really positive impact on patients on their daily lives. And then last year, I got to thinking about my particular set of skills and what I enjoy and what I would like to do um, in the future, and decided that I'd really like an, a holistic overview of the account and where everything sits. So I started the transition to the hybrid role, which became official in January. So I'm now an associate scientific project leader which is brilliant because I get to balance still my content development and I'm still learning different skills of that. But I'm also now learning all the other side um, of the account running, which is so interesting. So in terms of my day to day life, this was taken actually from Monday last week. So I would typically start with emails. Uh, one of the fantastic things about our industry is it's, it's a truly global industry. So you will have emails coming in overnight from um, doctors you know, you know, in Japan or on the West Coast of the US. So I'll be dealing with those first thing. Uh, I then had a technical check with an external expert. We're running a virtual symposium in September. So this was um, organizing the log logistics, making sure he was comfortable with the platform we were gonna be using. I then had the internal team status call. So this was making sure that everyone's resource was up to speed. Did anyone need any help? Make sure everyone was aware of where all the different projects were up to. I then did some finance tracking and invoicing as it was the end of the month. That was all project management stuff. In the afternoon, I got to focus on the content side. So I was working on a slide deck focusing on a team's strategy next year for 2022 and their product role, which was really interesting. And then I went back to project management in the evening where I was running the logistics uh, of an advisory board for my second account. And whilst that was um, mostly project management focus, technical aspect, all that, it was brilliant because I get to listen in to the discussions from these international renowned experts uh, and I get to hear what they say. So it's, it's interesting from two points of view. So in terms of why hybrid for me, I like the fact that it provides loads of opportunities to learn new skills and a completely different set of skills as well as still keeping my scientific content and not wasting the knowledge that I gained back at med school. I get to combine the two. I love the fact that it allows for a you know, huge variety. That's not necessarily just within the therapy areas, but also within your day-to-day -day working, no two days are the same. 
um, and I really like that variety. And finally, I like the fact that it gives me a holistic overview of the account. I like knowing, for example, where um, the content that I'm producing, where that fits in in the project management side and also vice versa. So that's why I love the fact that I'm now in a, in a hybrid role. And I'll hand over to David. Brilliant. So I started by spending a long time in academia. So I did a, a degree, then I did a master's, then I did a PhD, then I continued in the same lab doing a postdoc role just because it seemed the easiest thing to do at the time. Um, and then about 10 years ago, I actually attended one of Peter's uh, networking events and found out about MedCons. Um, so I joined as an associate medical writer and moved through the sort of writing ranks over the next seven years or so. Um, and when I first started in this agency, we didn't actually have client services or project leading teams. So although it's a writing role on paper, it was quite a hybrid role I was doing. Uh, but that changed a bit later on and we did bring in client services teams and that was something I missed from the role. So when I decided to move on, um, seeing these hybrid roles at Helios was something that really appealed to me. So I joined as a senior scientific project leader um, and I've since progressed uh, onto the senior management team. And in terms of my day-to-day -day role, um, it's usually a mix of meetings and, and you know, desk work. So I'll usually have two or three client meetings in a day, whether that's catching up about a specific project um, in terms of status or debriefing or kicking off a new project. Um, also have internal meetings. So that might be catching up with one of my teams about a meeting we're working on or the senior management team to do a bit of planning or just having one-to-ones with my line reports. And then in terms of the desk work, so I'll do um, a variety of sort of reviewing what my project management team have been developing. There might be, for example, invites or um, status sheets. Um, and also do reviewing of content as well. So for example, that might be an agenda and objectives for an advisory board that's, that's coming up. And in terms of what I love about having these hybrid roles in the company is the real wealth of scientific experience every one of our teams has, because you don't just have it on the, on the content um, team, you also have it on the project leading team. And that can lead to some, you know, really good brainstorms and ideas sharing within um, a sort of larger group of scientific, uh, scientifically knowledgeable people. Um, but still in the hybrid role, I get to lead projects, um, I get to mentor a team, and I get to do basically as much or as little content as I want to or sort of is needed within my teams. So just got a slide here to sort of summarize what you know the four of us have, have tried to get across there. So in terms of you as an individual coming into MedComs in a hybrid role, we think there's loads of advantages and you know they're listed on the slide there. But there's also quite a lot of advantages to the company as well. Like I was saying, each team has a real wealth of scientific experience. And one point that can be really valuable is, you know, we do go through sort of peaks and troughs within MedComs. And when you're at a really busy time, just having the sort of flexibility in roles, because we've got the scientific background in a high proportion of our team members, um, we're really able to sort of flex that really well during busy periods. And also that flexibility between the two strands means that it just fosters really close collaboration between our project leaders and our, our content teams, which probably isn't quite the same in agencies that have, you know, your non-scientific client services and uh, your right to track as well. But I think the key message from us is that the great thing is you can come in, you can get that grounding in MedComs, do a bit of content, a bit of project management, and then it's up to you where you want to take it. If you love the writing, you know, go off and, and move up the writing side. If you love the variety, stay in the hybrid role. I think that's the beauty of the role for us. So I'm just going to leave this up before we go into the Q&A. And it's just basically to say, if you've been interested by, you know, what we've discussed today, then please do submit a CV and covering letter to that recruitment email that's on the, on the page there. Uh, we're constantly recruiting for the best talent, so um, do submit that as soon as you're ready. You'll then be asked to complete a writing test, and if you're successful with your test, you'd then be asked to come into interview where we have a bit of a chat to see you know, what your transferable experience is and, and how you might fit into our team. 
So thank you very much. And uh, back to you, Peter, for the, the Q&A. Brilliant. Thank you very much, David, and, and indeed all of you. And uh, members of the audience, uh, we've got some of you online today. Please just join in with this um, Q&A session. So you've got a Q&A button and a chat button. Bottom of your screens, they'll pull up a couple of text boxes, um, send your questions in and we'll pick them up and um, and weave them into the conversation, which we'll have. Um, I'm going to start, um, if I may, <laughs> by just saying, um, uh, putting a little bit of context on this and, and a couple of warning shots to people who are listening to this. Um, and um, and I think what I wanted to say, particularly you said a couple of times, David, that, you know, the, 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 you know, in many agencies, the client services people are not scientific and so on. And I heard the screams of some of the PhD postdoc client services people, you know, coming, um, you know, from, so, one my, my message to everybody is always agencies are very different and it's very uh, difficult to put silo boxes on um on any of this okay um so yes we tend to talk in terms of writing and and, and, and client services type positions and all, also we, we need to remember the editorial the editor type entry level positions and um, but lots of the positions now are more of a mixture than so maybe they were when i started um but it's interesting that an agency is 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 very definitely identifying a hybrid role and that's what i like about this i, I just want to make that point that it's not quite as cut and dried as, as it could sound okay so people need to talk to the agencies and and, and talk about how those roles work um, lots of writers have client contact now you know in the good old days i was a business development account management sort you know i i relayed information from client to to, to writer and they'd get cross with me because i got it wrong or whatever you know um you know all those that has largely broken down now but it's very much a team exercise uh, and people need to sort of think about it on that sort of level but agencies then have different ways of managing that and yours is a little bit different to many of the others and i think that's what i'm i'm interested in here and um, can we just cover off briefly and maybe david just briefly um, as an overview level because it's 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 july 2021 you know we've had a, a strange 18 months everyone's working very flexibly you know the big question at the moment of people coming back in the office or, or not or whatever just just in a moment or two just give us a flavor for what's happening at helios in terms of how office based you are now let alone you know maybe going forward are you expecting everyone to be back in the office or are you now embracing the flexible working completely etc just give us a flavor yeah sure so so right now at the moment it's it's personal preference you know some people I'm more comfortable staying working at home and that's absolutely fine with the company i'm still working at home myself um some people who don't have a great setup at home who are really desperate to get back in whether that's just from their setup or mental health perspective the offices are open for people to come back in it's really carefully you know socially distanced and controlled um in terms of moving forward once you know government guidance changes and um you know that might be later on this month then basically the offices are open and we're asking people to submit, um, you know, what they want to do moving forwards. And, you know, unsurprisingly, pretty much everyone is moving towards a bit of a hybrid of some days at home, some days in the office. Um, for new starters, generally, we're, we're going to really encourage people to get in the office and, you know, absorb that experience from their colleagues that, that are going to be around them. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a degree of flexibility. We've seen it works really well through the high, through the, the pandemic. And, you know, we don't want to force people to come into the office when we, when we know that. But, you know, we do want people to be in the office, um, you know, at, at some point, because it does add a lot of value as well. Yeah. OK. And, and I know some of this is a, a work in progress and, and, and so on. But, you know, but simplistically, from an entry level point of view, it's not so long. It's not so necessary now to be in Oxford or in Manchester or you know Audley Park or whatever there's a degree of flexibility maybe there's going to be some hybrid nature to that so you can come into the office some of the time and not and so on. and the training and so on is pre presumably you've done a lot of that online um and you've been onboarding people and that's all basically a you know a positive experience it's worked well yeah yeah absolutely and, and some of the benefits is that a lot of that training is recorded now because we've been doing it virtually which is a bit different right. before so if there's ever a real urgent need to get someone some training and you know there isn't a batch of people ready for that you know they can they can watch some of the uh, the recorded stuff um so that's been one of the okay. benefits yeah cool okay so we've got some we've got in fact we've got quite a few questions starting to come in so um what i thought we'd do is try and tease out a, a couple of different things here and start I, i'm very keen we focus on the hybrid role basically okay um so um so let's do that um and maybe talk a little bit more about that in practice 
and then talk about some of these questions that are coming in about specific routes of entry and so on. Um, but let's pick up on Joel's question, which I think actually does actually, you know, ask quite an interesting question. You know, in a hybrid role, she's drawing attention. I mean, she's a hybrid freelancer. She's saying she either she does some project management or she does some content type work. But, you know, it's quite different. Um, and she tends to do one thing or the other rather than both at the same time. You're talking about hybrid role where people are doing things at the same time. Uh, content wise, you might need to sit and concentrate quite hard on something. Project management wise, you might be jumping around. Just give us a flavor. Maybe a couple of you could give us a flavor of how it works in practice. I think I'm right in saying when you showed your days, you maybe quite carefully said, I'm doing project management here and then I do content. And it, there's a bit of a, I suspect it's not quite as simple as that in real life. So I don't know. Um, uh, Nat, can you just sort of talk a little bit how do you juggle those two possibly conflicting type? Um, activities yeah absolutely I think if it was as cut and dried at that that would be that would be great so do often a lot of things do happen simultaneously but they're completely right in that to actually sit down and work on some content you really need that dedicated space so um, and because a lot of us are hybrids um, even across the different roles I think everybody's quite respectful of that as well so if you do need the time and the headspace to work on something um, content-based just block out time in our calendars it's almost as simple as that and just as long as the team are aware that we have we're ring fencing specific time and um, that as, yeah, like I said as long as the team are aware that's usually quite convenient to, to fit in I think yeah. Okay. Another... Okay. Can I, Sarah? But can I be a bit more specific? Because I think the question is aimed at you. How do you manage it? You know, because it, it, you know, from a, from your mind point of view, you're jumping between these sorts of scenarios. Um, rather than, I mean, I get the fact that people can put the time in a diary. But Sarah, how do you find jumping between, or do you not find it a problem? Uh, I, I did find it a problem <laughs> when I right, was in okay. the um, SPCO role. It was a challenge for sure. You have to, they are quite different ways of working. So um, with the project management jobs, it's quite small, uh, quick jobs. Um, whereas for content, you need to dedicate a good chunk of time. You can't really work on a report for 15 minutes and then put it down and answer yeah. a question. So you do need to um, ring fence that time. Exactly. as not that said? Um, whether that telling your team that tomorrow I have to work on a report so I'm not going to answer emails all day um, and then just having cover from the rest of the team that if there's an urgent email that comes in that someone else will pick it up um, you know that's the benefit of we can all support one another um, the other thing I was going to mention is that we never have uh, where, you, where you've got a hybrid role we don't uh, you won't work on uh, project management and writing on the same project oh. um, because that's uh, really impossible to manage. Um, so you'll have probably two different projects, one where you're focused on project management and another where you're working on the content. And that just helps to alleviate kind of bottlenecks of, oh, everything is due at the same time because we need to get this project delivered at a specific date. So I think that also helps uh, quite a bit. Okay, okay, okay. That makes some sense. Um, Victor, I'm gonna bring you in and I want to ask a question actually. Um, I'm just quite intrigued at the moment because we seem to be hearing of and talking to more and more medics in medcoms, uh, which I find interesting because for a long time, there haven't been many medics. Um, there have been people who've gone, well, how can you do medcoms without being a medic? Um, and I just wondered from your point of view, just a little bit more, how you found the transition from a sort of a medical clinical type environment. Um, and you've come in into the project, into the project management type and, and the writing role. Um, so you're not acting as a medical consultant, are you? So just just give me a flavour of how how it's been for you. And as I say, I've got I'm just I'm just interested in the whole idea of progressing from medicine into medcoms at the moment. Yeah, it was it was a really interesting transition. I have to admit, I never heard of medcoms when I was in medicine. I'd always assumed that the people at the top of the paper were the ones who wrote the paper. Right. So actually, when I found out about medcoms, it was a they sound really interesting. I get to use all this content and the things that I'm passionate about in terms of science and improving patients' lives, and I get to use it in a way that actually suits what sits well with me because medicine in terms of actual clinical on the shop floor just wasn't working for me and um, in terms of the actual transition it was actually quite easy the hardest thing for me I found was shutting the laptop at the end of the day I think because medicine every job has to be done that day so the idea that actually a job can take a couple of days you know writing a report you can take your time and take two or three days that was actually my biggest challenge when coming across but because of the teams are always so supportive you, you always have that kind of network around you, helping you with that and helping you transition. Everyone's been new in the career at some point in their lives. Everyone knows what it's like, whether you're coming from academia or whether you're coming from a totally different background like myself. 
so it was it was fine it was everyone supportive and you kind of figure out your own way of how to do it for me it's lists and that's what I've brought across from, me uh, from medicine is, is just lists and that's how I know exactly where I am and that I think probably going back to the previous question helps me with the flicking between the content and the project management because literally to my left I've got my big A4 pad and I know just from a glance exactly where the different sections are so if I suddenly need to jump out of content brain into project management brain my list will tell me where it is and that's just my personal way of working it so there were some skills that I brought across from medicine into medcoms and now that I'm now I'm doing the transition into hybrid role it's it's so fascinating because it's a completely different area that I'd never even considered because project management and NHS is very much the managers which are very separate from the clinicians so and right. this is again it's I like to learn so this is a whole new way of me learning different skills different um, ideas and concepts Okay, okay. And um, again, what, what I love about these sorts of panels um, is the variety of backgrounds and, and it just puts out the message out there that it's very difficult because people will say to me, you know, what do I need to qualify as or what qualification do I need to be a medcoms person or a medical? Actually, there's a whole variety of backgrounds and it's about transferable skills. And actually, the beauty is having a team of people with the, with the uh, complementary skills and, and that's the trick is putting that team together so I, I love this sort of discussion just listening to you talk about your different backgrounds and David I'm going to try and talk a little bit um, about the process of getting in um, and just again I'm going to be a little bit specific here but cover off a couple of things so um, you've said that the hybrid role is there and an associate medical writer is there just to state the obvious you haven't got an associate account management client services role have you you either you either come into the hybrid role and continue in that or there is a content role but i'm not missing the point there am i that's right yeah that they are our entry level roles um so they're all scientific background roles um we do take on non-scientific people who've got agency experience so we do have some non-scientific project leaders as well but our entry level okay. roles are all scientific Okay, okay. So, so what I was leading to was a question which was, you know, are there roles um, that just simply do the project management side and there's no content at all? So as a slightly more sort of experience level, that is definitely the case, yeah? Yeah, and, and you know, you can even come in as a scientific project coordinator if you've got the scientific background and you choose, you know, not to do the content. Um, we still really value having that scientific background as part of the right. role. Right. OK. OK. So again, it's about finding the right people to fit into the team and, and, and developing them appropriately. And um, Rebecca's come in. Let's, I, I, I sort of know the answer to this question, but let's just let's just throw it at you. Rebecca's come in. You know, I've been um, I guess she's been what six years postdoc. Um, you know, are you put off, I guess, by the amount of time? I mean, David, you've got a quick answer, to that, haven't you? Because you, you you sat in postdoc land for a while, didn't you? Yeah, no, we're not put off. So we do have people who've been in academia a long time um and yeah again it's up to you whether you think a writing route would be better for you with that experience or if you really love the project management um you know the entry-level hybrid role could be for you as well yeah okay and just again um looking at this in terms of getting in and the the, the time between applications decisions and so on um again i think you said um the entry level you you, you described the entry level type process and, and again everyone's getting writing tests and so on aren't they um i guess probably partly what's behind that question is if i'm finishing my phd in three months six months time at what point would i be applying to you do i wait till nearer the time or would, just give us a flavor david maybe at an overall level uh, give us a flavor from of your expectations there yeah so basically you apply whenever you're ready so as an example we've got people who are finishing their degrees um now or in the summer and they've already been through the application process and they're ready to start at the start of september uh, but generally we're really quick with the application process if we get good candidates in we move through you know review the cv the writing test interview offer really quickly um so you know if you've got a degree finishing over the next few months do feel free to apply now and we can take you through the application process so you're ready to go as, as soon as you finish okay because to be blunt if you found someone you're interested in and they weren't available for three months you would go that's under, that's fine we understand yeah we'll sit and wait sort of thing yeah okay okay cool um what i was going to ask um i think there's a question uh somewhere about um if, if somebody knows that they're either project management or 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 writing type orientated how's the value of a of a hybrid role um 
I mean, I, I guess from my point of view, I would say the more experience you can get, the better sort of thing. But um, does anybody want to answer that sort of a question? Is there a bit of advice? Um, I, Sarah, you went in as a on the writing side, didn't you? Um, yeah. But if someone knows knows they want to do that, but actually how useful is it to, to come in at a hybrid uh, in the first place? Yeah, I think yeah. realistically, it's, it's so hard to know <laughs> because you've not right. done the job. So until you go in, you can't really know what it is that you like. So while you might really enjoy writing um before coming in you might find that actually when you get into the job you really enjoy the project management or vice versa so I know for me I actually thought that perhaps I would end up picking the project management stream after um I wanted to kind of start open but then I, I thought that that was the way I was going to go or way I was going to lean but um yeah after actually working the role I found that no I do like the content and um and changed my mind so I think um, having that experience of being in the hybrid position and trying a bit of everything, um, it just means that, you know, you get, you're a bit quicker to work out what it is that you like. Yeah, yeah. And again, at an overall level in medcoms, again, I'm, I'm keen to tell people that the difficulty is getting in. Once you're in, doors open yeah. up in all sorts of directions. And I think, again, that's just a message to get out there. Um, and some agencies may not be uh, arranged the way you are, but there's still opportunities to move around between the different special uh, sort of roles and so on. Um, but that training in, 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 in across the business, I think, is very valuable, whatever you end up doing sort of thing. Um, I'm very aware that we're slightly over time, actually, already, which um, I don't know where the time's gone. Um, but I think probably in terms of um, capturing this for the recording, we should probably sort of finish on that sort of note. I mean, I, I just think listening to you guys all talking and uh, is just brilliant. OK, we could we could just sit and listen and we get the insights into what you're doing and how the, the different backgrounds work and so on. Um, and I hope people have, sort of, have got some useful some useful information from that but for today I, I think for the recording I'd like to hold draw a hold there Th those of you watching us we've got 10 minutes or so we can carry on and there's some quite specific questions we can sort of pick up in here um so um so uh, don't rush away if you don't need to but huge thank you to the panelists um and and then and the basic message is contact you if, if people are interested yeah so LinkedIn is an easy way of contacting you or you provide the details of the website and so on so huge thank you to you I'm going to stop the recording now if we can all just give a bit of a wave um, and, um, and take care everyone. Bye bye.